All right, surely I've done this before. All right, guess what? I deleted that file. Like, good lord. See what I told you? I'm letting you. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Sarah. Welcome to my channel. I thought I'd make a vlogging series sort of highlighting my journey that led me to take a trip to India to get treated there. Um, I ended up seeing a gastroenterologist. This gastroenterologist did a lot of the tests himself. So I'm really grateful for that because initially I was a bit skeptical about him considering the fact that he was really young and I wasn't sure if he'd have, like if he'd seen enough cases, like it's sort of been drilled in my head that, that your doctor's got to be old because that means he's seen a lot of cases. Um, but when I went in, it was just really reassuring. He, as soon as he touched my stomach, he was like, this isn't right. This, like, you know, there's definitely like severe bloating over there. And I was like, oh, this is actually one of my good days. I haven't felt bad in a while. Um, and then, <laughs> and then, um, so he was suspecting this thing called SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So we did this thing called a gastro ultrasound. He said that there's only like five people in Melbourne or Australia, I can't remember which, who do it. And he was one of them. So he was one of those doctors who did the tests himself. Um, and when I went to see him next, he did the test on me. And um, that's when he was like, hmm, I'm actually seeing more things down the bottom of your tummy, even though you're experiencing pain on the top. Like I'm seeing it in your pelvis, I'm seeing it like on your, like on the lower left and your lower right. So there was like a buildup of stool. It was also ovarian cysts and there was like pelvic fluid. So we went on to do a few more tests just to kind of rule things out in those departments. Um, and then eventually it came down to uh, doing a flexible sigmoidoscopy, which is kind of like a colonoscopy, but only looks at the lower part of your colon, I believe. Um, so before I did the flexible sigmoidoscopy, I had to undergo um, two enemas and the enemas didn't do anything like I didn't go to the toilet after it. Um, I couldn't go to the toilet after it. I really tried to go. Um, and, and unfortunately, so like when those test results came out, he was like, I couldn't really tell much because you're like, there was way too much stool built up. Um, Oh, when I had to do my colonoscopy, so this guy ended up doing a colonoscopy for me. Um, and I was on, so firstly I took stool softness, I took enough medication for fecal impaction, I took normal laxatives, I took prescription laxatives, and then I took my Pico Prep, which is my colonoscopy bowel clearing kit. Nothing came out. No, well, he said that he was unable to complete the colonoscopy because I had so much stool built up inside me, and I was like, I've got no idea how to get the stool up. Um, so that to him was very concerning, and then he came to conclude that the reason I had symptoms all over the place was probably because I had a sort of connective tissue disease, and therefore he suggested that I see a rheumatologist. Unfortunately, with this doctor, he um was undergoing similar problems he was undergoing gastrointestinal problems so he actually had to be away from his workplace for about six months so if i'd be waiting for an appointment like like the day that i'm meant to see him and then i'd get a call from like his receptionist being like we've got to cancel like you know we'll make it two weeks after and two weeks after and two weeks after so he was going through his own sort of saga but the good thing about that is it made him more I feel like it made him more empathetic like I felt like I could talk to him much more easily because he was always there reassuring me going like don't let anyone tell you this is all in your head don't let anyone tell you that that pain is not real pain don't let anyone tell you that like you know you're imagining it don't like this isn't about going to a psychologist and all of that so he was, he just seemed to really believe me, which for me was very important at the time because I was starting to like doubt myself a lot. Not that I ever told him that, he just knew. He was just like, you know, very, very reassuring. Um, this gastroenterologist was the one who was like, hey, I can clearly see that there are things wrong in your system. Like I can see you've got this fluid over here. I can see you've got your cysts over here. I can see that your tummy composition is just not right. But in terms of like things that we're looking out for in this test, it's coming out clear, like it's negative pretty much. Um, so that was that. Um, he, I was also told to go see an endocrinologist just to see if it was my thyroid that was stuffing things up. 
I was meant to see a rheumatologist before I decided to go see go to India and I was also asked to see a dermatologist because I was having these symptoms that were just kind of all over the place. Um, anyway, so I am a bit of a spiritual person so I was sort of just, you know, making a prayer every day that at this point like I was in pain and I really wanted a solution to this so I was starting to make prayers like, you know, like please help please make this easy on me and please take this problem away from me and please make the doctors conclude what it is so that I can be treated for it. Um, and it was around this time that my parents were starting to freak out a little bit. So my parents are not necessarily the intrusive type. They are not usually the kind of people who notice things, especially because I mean, like I'm the middle child. I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm not the, I'm not, I don't always get noticed um, in a good way. Um, but. I think they were starting to realize that I was just acting really weird. I was starting to look really weird and it was just, you know, like my friends were coming over to see me all the time because I wasn't going out as much, things like that. So my parents were a bit worried and then they heard about this doctor in Sri Lanka. So they um, called him up and apparently he worked in an Ayurvedic slash Yunani um, center, I believe, and I might be very, very wrong. I believe that Yunani means is like the Pakistani version of Ayurvedic treatment I'm not sure so anyway this guy kind of heard me out on the phone asked me to look asked to look through some of my reports realized that I had a bulging disc as well he just he could say that from my colonoscopy and um, I also had a lumbar MRI that confirmed that um, but he sent through a lot of medication from Sri Lanka that I took with a very open mind um, it was a bit into like a, maybe a month into taking those medications that I was I started looking it up and I realized that it was treating more the symptoms it was treating like me for my piles and hemorrhoids and it was like a laxative and things like that so I wasn't very comfortable taking like I didn't feel like that really addressed the problem especially because my symptoms persisted um so I decided to go see my gastroenterologist again and when I was there telling him about it, he was like, oh, are you taking Ayurvedic medicine? You should consider Pachakarma. Now, I'm sure most of you would know it is not normal for a Western doctor to recommend alternative medicine. But when this guy said Pachakarma, it really stood out to me because my best friend had also mentioned Pachakarma to me like two years ago. And it always goes in one year out the other. He kept bringing it up, but I never really like, I mean, I looked into it a little bit, but I didn't really consider it until this doctor said it as well. Um, and it just happened to be one of those things that just kept coming up. Like it was just, I was just reading into it. So like suddenly like it was coming up on things that I was reading. There were like advertisements about it. Um, I know that there's this whole thing where the internet just knows what you're thinking about. But it just felt more than just that. Like my parents started running into people who were talking about this treatment and they were talking to people who were like doing this treat, who had done this treatment in the past and all of that. So it was a bit weirdly timed and I was like, oh, that's really interesting. Now it was around this time that since I was going back and forth to doctors and my condition was deteriorating and I had to go to this work trip to Shepparton. And when I was in Shepparton, um, I just, I was feeling really, really drained and I couldn't keep my head up and I had barely done anything, but I just felt like I couldn't function like a normal human being. So while I was sitting down during like one of like my five minute breaks, I just went online out of curiosity and I just typed up Panchakarma. Even though I read about it before, I thought I'd, you know, look into it just once more. And then I had a task to do, so I just kind of left the tab open and I went on to do whatever work I had to do. When I was walking home, in my head, for some reason, I don't know if you guys do this, but sometimes like when an idea comes to my head, I'm just like, let me just plan it out. Even though I have no intention of actually executing that plan. So like, I was just like, let me just see out of curiosity how expensive it is to go to India. Um, and I looked it up and it was, um, so I looked up the ticket prices. Then I went back into my apartment and there was a bathtub over there and I was really excited about the fact that there was going to be a bathtub there since I hadn't had a bath, like a, like been in a bathtub for a while. So I'd taken a bath bomb with me and right as I was getting in the bath, I messaged my friend going like, hey, I feel really, really shit. Um, can you please give me a call in 30 minutes because I'm going to take a bath um, just to check on me because like I feel so faint. I feel so like 
and I just had the worst headache, like I was tunnel visioned, um, the headache was really bad, the light was really intense on my face and the headache just did not seem to be going away. I couldn't eat, like we went for dinner before that and I couldn't get the foods from my throat so I didn't even eat and I was just like, I just feel terrible, just check on me and she was like, Sarah, what the hell is happening? Um, she called me, she was like, you can't keep doing this, like, you know, I know you're going to doctors, I know you're trying, but what you're trying is not good enough, you need to start thinking out of the box, start looking at alternative options, because this is just, this, this just can't keep happening, you can't just keep spending money like this, and going back and forth, and not getting any result out of it, and then just, you know, giving up, um, because that's what was happening at this point, I was going to the doctors for like, you know, a couple of months, repeatedly and then I'd be let down and then I wouldn't go for like three months and I'd be in excruciating pain then I'd go again and it was just going back and forth and she was like this is just not good enough um and when I was in Shepparton so it turned out that I forgot to tell my mom that I was going to be away so in, at midnight she calls me and goes like oh are you coming home today and I was like I was kind of just mumbling in my sleep and I was like oh like I'm in Shepparton mom we should probably go to India and and she was just like, are you okay? Like she could she'd tell immediately from my voice that I wasn't okay. And she was like, yeah, of course we can go to India, blah, blah, blah. Um, and that the idea was just kind of, it just kind of came to me out of nowhere. But I, it is worth mentioning that I was also like, at this point, my prayer had changed from, you know, like help the doctors figure out what's wrong to, you know, show me if I need to go to India at all for this treatment because it didn't feel like it was worth the investment. Like it was coming up to eight thousand dollars, but 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 that was during holiday season. I was trying to take advantage of my forced annual leave so that I could have time so I could take my sick leave and my forced annual leave and have time to be treated and recover and everything. So it was during that time and also it was just a ballpark figure, but I was like, is it really worth spending eight grand? Like maybe I shouldn't go and all of that. And it was when I started praying for a sign as to whether I should go, that's when, you know, Shepparton happened and I was feeling really, really shit. Um, and my symptoms didn't seem to go away. So Shepparton kind of kicked me like, like just, you know, really caught me off guard. And I was um, in a bad state for like the next two weeks. And this is me pr keeping on praying that, you know, I get a sign as to whether I should go or not. Now you guys might say like a sign is the way is interpreted the way you want it to be interpreted. So you might read a sign and be like, you know, like, oh, this means I should go. And you can read the exact same sign and be like, this means I shouldn't go. But for me, I was low key kind of not wanting to go since it was quite expensive and I didn't want to spend that money. Um, but it just kept pointing towards it. And my parents were not really sold on the idea because I don't know about you guys, might be like an ethnic thing or might not even be an ethnic thing, might be just a my parent thing. They're not sold on an idea that they're not familiar with. So my parents grew up around Western medicine and they have heard of people who did Ayurvedic medicine in Sri Lanka. So to my dad, he, it didn't make sense that like I was going to India to get treated, even though I kept telling him Kerala is like the Ayurvedic hub. He was like, yeah, but you don't know where you're going. You don't, we don't know anyone there. You don't speak the language there. You don't know which one's a good place and which one's not. And you can't go to India. Like it's just, you know, like he was just not sold on the idea. He was like, I don't see why you can't just go to my doctor in Sri Lanka. He's really good. He'll fix you up. And personally, I was just sick of seeing different doctors and getting different like the like hearing different things from them so i didn't want to see another western doctor and dad was like oh i've got an ayurvedic doctor in sri lanka you can go see him and i just wasn't keen um mom i think my parents were also praying for a sign because then suddenly they started running into all these people who've either heard of this treatment or who'd gone to india to get this treatment done and they weren't you know searching for these people like they were just coming to my parents and telling them these stories meanwhile like I was like somehow like um meanwhile I just felt like I was getting sign after sign after sign as well you know firstly with my doctor suggesting Panchakarma then with my friend bringing it up with me again and how he says it's definitely the best thing in the world that's going to work for me um you know like praying for a sign and then getting like 20 signs of like severe pain um, like really, really bad, excruciating pain. So I was in a really, really bad state once I started praying for the sign. Um, and then, so I told you about Shepparton. Oh, I should probably tell you about how I got to the hospital. 
So then I just started looking into it. Like I said, I was just planning something that I had no intention of actually executing. Um, and I was a bit confused because were, I was being led to like resort sites and like different hospitals and I just wasn't sure which one to pick and what to do. So um, I, you know, eventually read a few forums and realized that there was something called NABH, which I believe stands for National Accreditation Board of Hospitals. And on that website, which is a government website, they had a list of Ayurvedic hospitals that I, be I believe the list was called Ayush, which might be Ayurvedic homeopathic i'm not sure what the s is but i'm assuming that's what it is and then they had another list called panchakarma hospitals so the panchakarma list was about 11 hospitals i believe and then the ayush hospitals i think there was like 96 or something something like that so i was like all right you know what i'm just going to email all of them so i sent all of them a generic email i think i sent out about 107 emails that day um i sent all of them sort of generic email like hey i'm thinking of doing panchakarma on this date you know like what are your availabilities and how much do you charge and i didn't have any intention of this being a screening process i was just trying to get a ballpark figure again no intention of executing this plan just out of curiosity and i think i got about 90 ish replies so that was pretty good and out of the 90 ish replies i could immediately tell that there was a difference between some of these replies like some of them were very resort like definitely commercial they were just telling me what the prices were and what i had to do and like you know you have to join the christmas buffet and you have to do this you have to do that um and then it was like you know but you have to pay for this and you have to pay for that so they were very like money centric and then there were some that were obviously like like they were like yeah you can come for panchakarma it's going to be this many days long and this is what we're going to be like this is what the charge is going to be so like you could definitely tell the difference between the ones who are more professional and actually cared about what your condition was and the ones who are just giving you a generic like here you go here's our hotel catalog or like a hospital catalog and this is how many days and this is the cost out of all those 90 ish emails that i got back about 50 ish were a bit more serious and they were like send us your medical records or give us more of a context or we'll let you know based on your condition so i eliminated the rest and i kind of just focused on those um another thing that i then like you know 50 ish was a bit too much so then i just went through for no reason at all just on the basis that kerala is the ayurvedic hub i eliminated all the ones that were not care like in kerala and i was left with about maybe something like 20 ish and I was emailing them back and forth. I was sending them my medical records. I spoke to some of them on the phone and all of that. And in the meantime, I also messaged my cousin who's got a lot of Kerala friends, Keralite friends. And I also messaged this one friend that I used to go to school with in Qatar who was also from Kerala and just told him like, hey, like, you know, have you, do you know about any of these places? I kind of had my heart set on one place that just seemed really legit. They sent me a questionnaire. They asked me about my lifestyle, the kind of food I eat every symptom how long i've been experiencing it for so i kind of just and they had really good reviews on TripAdvisor, and most people were talking about it and it was aria by this hour which is what my friend recommended and it's also what my cousin recommended and they recommended just that place so i believe that is kind of like a household name in kerala they also call it kotekal ayurved um maybe that's what it was called before i don't know or if that's its other name um, so I decided to call them and um, they weren't really nice on the phone to me. Um, they were quite like snappy and quick. I wouldn't say that they were being mean. I just think that it was just the way, I don't know, it was just different. The way they spoke to me was weird. Um, and they were like, oh yeah, you know, sorry, but we don't have availability until next year. And I was pretty set on using my first annual leave to go. So then I was just like to my friend, oh, you know, they were really mean on the phone. Like, I don't know if I should be going. And my friend was like, you know what? Why don't you call them one more time? Like this was a few days later. My friend was like, why don't you call them one more time? And if they're mean to you, take it as a sign. You know, take it as a sign that that you're not meant to go. Um, I guess like desperate times, you know, you start looking for a sign and everything and you, just, you start looking for like, you want someone else to make this decision for you, especially when you're investing so much money. Um, so I called them and I was really scared when I was like, oh, like he's definitely going to yell at me. I don't want to be yelled at. And he was really nice to me. And he was like, hey, listen, I'm so sorry. Like, I understand that you're desperate, but we really don't have any room. Um, might I suggest you speak to the Kochi branch? 
and um, like, you know, just have a conversation with them and they'll let you know if they have any cancellations. So I called up the Kochi branch and I was like, okay, you know, if they're mean to me, then I'm definitely not going. Um, and then when I called them, they were so nice. They were much nicer than the first guy. And I was just like, holy shit. And then he got me to speak to a doctor immediately and she was quite reassuring as well. And um, he was like, hey, listen, I'm so sorry. We don't actually have availability, but you know, we'll keep your, like, we'll let you know. We'll keep you in the loop. And I was like, oh, you know, there you go. There's my sign. And then the next day, no joke, the next day, I get an email from them going like, hey, we've actually got a cancellation for the 11th of December. Do you want to come? And it was weird because in my head, the way I planned it out is I was like, if I go to India, I want to go on the 9th of December. That's when the tickets are reasonable. And that's when I can make use of my leave without losing too many days of unpaid, like without using too many unpaid leave days. And 9th of December was the date I had in my head. And this hospital's like, if you get admitted on the 11th, we'll have a room for you. And I was like, that is bloody perfect. Definitely book it in. By this point, my parents had run into enough people and they were kind of sold on the idea. They seemed convinced because they'd heard the word critical I read from so many people, so many locals, so many internationals. So I was all set to go. And when I went one, one more time to my good GP, um, just to get like his opinion, like this was before I booked my tickets, just to get his opinion, he was like, look, Western medicine doesn't have a solution to this. Like you're gonna have to live a sedentary lifestyle. Like, what are you gonna do? Um, it doesn't hurt to try, go try it out and see how it goes. So I was like, all right, you know, that's definitely reassuring for me. Like all my doctors, um, the good ones seem to have this opinion that I should be trying and trying anything that I can. So that's pretty much what led to my journey to India. It is a bit all over the place because I've recorded this like 17 times. I'm so sick of it. I don't even know what I've missed and what I haven't. But that's that. I'm just gonna post this, you know. All right, that's it, bye.